to everyone from Khan's Econ Nugget channel. Today we are going to discuss optimal resource allocation rule and a couple of examples. So optimal resource allocation rule says that the hiring manager or the economic manager uh, has to has to apply the allocation rules such as where the marginal revenue product from an input or resource has to be equal to the resources price that the hiring manager is hiring. So in this case, we're going to keep it simple and we're going to use only one input, which is labor. So the resource price in this case will be the labor price, which means the wages or salaries of each worker. And MRP, which is marginal revenue product, uh, that we're going to explain as the marginal product of an input, in this case labor, multiplied with the price of the output that that input is producing. So in this case, if this is a donut uh, company and the uh, donut is sold at $20 a dozen, then if the first worker, worker number one here on the column number one, if that worker's marginal product is 10 dozens of donut, then marginal revenue product, MRP, for first worker will be 10 times 20, which is per dozens of donut sold, so which is $200, right? So that's why we see on the column number five, for first worker, the MRP, is $200. So now we come back quickly to go over those uh, all those six columns one by one. So column one is basically uh, presenting the data about the input that is being employed. So worker can be hired zero worker, one worker, two workers, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. Column number two is measuring total product. That's the contribution of the employed resources up to that point. So it's cumulative, right? So if the total product is 25 here, which is corresponding to the labor unit two, that means two workers together produced 25 dozens of donuts. If the, the total product is 45, which is corresponding to three workers, then we have to read it as three workers combinedly produced 45 dozens of donuts, etc. So then column number three is measuring the marginal product of a particular worker. So for example, if worker one has a marginal product of 10, how we found that? We found that by taking the difference between uh, total product when there was no workers and when there is one worker. So uh, with this difference is 10 and we divided that by column number one, change in column number one, right? So column number one change was zero worker and uh, one worker, so change was one here. So column number two item was 10 divided by change in column number one was one, that gives us marginal product of first worker to be 10. Similarly, for the second worker uh, over here, marginal product is 15, how? Because the difference between a total product when only one worker worked, that's 10 dozens of donut, and then when two people combinedly produce 25 dozens of donut, so that difference between 10 dozens and 25 dozens is 15 dozens, and divided by change in worker, which is the difference is one. So 15 divided by one is 15, which is marginal product of second worker. Here 20 divided by one is 20, which is the marginal product of third worker, etc. And similarly, we see marginal product of sixth worker here is five, how we got that? So the total product of five people combined was 70 dozens and six workers combined was 75 dozens. So the difference between 70 and 75 is five divided by the number of worker change is just one. So that's five divided by one is five, etc. And notice that it can also be zero, marginal product can also be negative. For example, by the time we hire eighth worker, the kitchen is so congested that out of eight people, the output indeed was even less than the combined output of seven workers. So seven people combinedly produced 75 dozens of donut, whereas eight people together, maybe due to congestion of that kitchen, the actual total output was decreased. 
So it was only 75 do 70 dogens, which is a decrease of 5 dogens. So that's negative 5 for the marginal product here. Now we see the column number 4 is just uh, uh, putting a wages of the workers. Here we are saying that assume if each worker is receiving a flat pay of $100 and each dozen of donut is sold at $20, then what will be the optimal number of workers to be hired? So we are answering this question, right? And applying the optimal resource allocation rule, which is called MR equals MRP equals resource prices. So MRP stands for marginal revenue product, which has to be equal to the resource prices. In this case, the workers' wages, flat pay is $100 here. So, so here we see that when there was only one worker hired, marginal product was 10, and therefore MRP out of that first worker was, so the 10 times this 20, the donut, donut price, right? So 10 dozens was marginal product and each dozen was sold at $20. So marginal revenue out of that first worker to be uh, obtained was $200. Similarly, from second worker's marginal product was 15 dozens of donut, which the company could sell for 20 uh, dollars uh, each dozen, that means they will be making $300 out of the second guy's marginal revenue product of second guy, right? Similarly, marginal revenue product of third guy is four, $400, etc. And now we have to see that at where, uh, at which hiring level the this optimal resource allocation rule applies, that where MRP equals resource prices, right? So, so here we see uh, that equalization happens by the time the, they hire sixth worker. With that sixth worker, marginal product is five dozens, and therefore marginal revenue product will be uh, hundred dollars because five dozen uh, times the each dozen is selling price is twenty dollars. So twenty times five is hundred. So here we see that the wages paid for the sixth worker and the marginal revenue product of sixth worker they're equal so both are 100 so in this case the optimal hiring will be six workers but why seventh worker will not be optimally hiring because if seventh worker we hire then the marginal product of that person is zero that means that person did not bring any revenue for the company so then the company would not be interested in hiring that person and paying uh, that uh, wages right on the other hand, why hiring fifth worker will not be uh, optimal for the uh, company? Because the fifth worker's marginal re marginal product is 10 dozens of donut, which means company could earn $200, $200 out of that person's work. So that means if the company stop at hiring at the fifth worker, then looks like the company would miss out on, on additional uh, revenue opportunity uh, because it looks like the sixth worker here uh, could bring in, uh, could just pay for the person's uh, cost. So that means the company will be better off by hiring to the point where the marginal revenue product of that worker is equal to the cost on that worker, cost in the form of payments of wages and salaries, right? That is why the optimal research allocation rule is MRP, marginal revenue product, has to be equal to that inputs prices or wages in this case, right? Similarly, we see one more example using um, similar data, but we just change the wages. Here, the wages are $200 each worker and the donut price is $10 per dozen. So here now we see uh, the optimal hiring amount will be three workers because at the third worker's marginal product is 20 dozens of donut, which means the marginal revenue product is $200, which is 20 times uh, $10 per dozen of donut. And the worker's wages are also 200. So here the wages 200 and the marginal revenue product 200, both are equal at this hiring level. So in this case, optimal allocation of resource would be uh, three workers. So, we have to just remember that when we use a single input based this kind of uh, this kind of exposition we have to make sure that uh, the optimal allocation of resource will be the point at which the marginal product marginal revenue product of that resource has to be equal to the marginal cost of that resource the, in this case 
the wages, right? So wages has to be equal to the marginal revenue product of the labor uh, to find the optimal allocation of, in this case, uh, labor resources. Uh, I hope um, uh, it was clear. The concept was clear. And if you have any question about optimal resource allocation, please uh, put the comment on the chat box. Thank you so much.